that God would have his way. Amen. So, Sister Karima, the floor is yours. You hear me? Loud and clear. Oh, wow. Oh, thanks, Nathan. <laughs> All right. No oh, problem. Um, good afternoon. I was about to say good morning, as usual, because I never know what time of the day it is. But good afternoon, Richards. Um, It's lovely to be with you guys. Again, it's a lovely to fellowship with one another. Um, it's a blessing to be amongst, you know, everybody. Um, and the song I'm going to sing today is called The Blessing. Um, what I will do today is I'm going to show the lyrics. So while while I sing the song, I just want everybody to kind of meditate on the words and um, sit back and just, if you want to sing along, sing along. Um, but yeah, it literally just says, um, Lord, I just ask you to bless me and bless my generation and the generations after that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing. Um, hallelujah. One second, I'm in. Oh. Need to know. I'm using a Mac this weekend, so I'm trying to figure out how to uh, share the music as well. Can you hear that? The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you. Give me peace, yeah. The Lord make peace and give you and give you peace, yeah. And give you. Amen. 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 Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you. Amen. 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 
Be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and your children, and your children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and their children, and their children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you. And a thousand generations, and your children, and their children, and their children, and their children, may his favor be upon you. And a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and your children, and your children, may his presence go before you and behind you. And beside you, all around you, and within you, he is with you, he is with you, hey, morning and in the evening, in your calling and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, he is with you, he is with you, yeah. Joyful, amen. 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 And amen. May his favor be upon you. And may he bless you. And may he keep you. And may his face shine upon you. And may he continue to bless you and bless you. May, may he continue to bless your family and your generations to come. I love that song. May he continue to be with you. May he continue to. May he continue to be your, your strong tower. May he continue to be um, your, your, your shield and your strength. May he continue to be with you forever and ever. May he continue to always be with you. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Let's sing it and believe it. Let's, let's, let's take the words. Um, yes, I've just sang it, but let's take the words and um, meditate on them and literally just pray them. And God will continue to be with us in this moment and forever and forever and forevermore. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Karima. God bless you too and your family. Let's ask Sister Janet is to pay for Pastor Quick. Amen. Sister Janet, are you there? Hello, Janet Bowen, me? Oh, there's me. two Sister Janet. Janet. Janet yes, Bowen. Sister Janet. Yeah. And you can pray if you like, Sister Janet. That's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord God. 
every dialogue which you've got also there. Thank you, Lord God, for the word, Lord God, for the opportunity. And Lord God, in the church, Lord God, with the body that is St. Jude's, Lord God. The word, Lord God, no matter what body, Lord God, it's just thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship. And I thank you for the song that was sung, Lord God, about the blessings. I pray, Lord God, for pastors right now, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that you bless his ministry, Lord God, his church, Lord God. I just pray, Lord God, for all the body of Christ, Lord God, as we come to week, Lord God, in this time that we're in, Lord God. Pray, Lord God, that you'll strengthen us, Lord God, that the walk that we're in, Lord God, we know that it is a walk, Lord God, that was built for glory, Lord God, and eternal life. I pray, Lord God, that any discouraged souls today, Lord God, that you'll strengthen them, Lord God. Lord God, let them know, Lord God, that you're always with them, surrounded in them. Thank you for today. What we are to be service today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Janet. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. God is a good, good God. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm also to give today a title. Make makes a way for you. Ready and be prepared. I'll write that down for you. He makes a way for you. Ready. And prepare. Okay, so I just put it in the chat so they can copy and paste it. Leisure. I know sometimes you don't like listening, but God is a good God. Praise the Lord. So thanks, Brother Nathan, Mr. Scott, uh, Sister Mawinya. See, she didn't argue with me today, did she? She's done a good job. Praise the Lord. You see, that those few weeks of stress and struggle over the last eight months is brought her out to, to a, a different level. Mighty God. So we thank God for her. So please pray for her and encourage her. Uh, don't want to start dragging her off to all different churches and all different platforms before she's ready. She still needs to be cooked further. Uh, so don't to, uh, be extinguished before she even starts to fly. But pray for her uh, and surround her, protect her uh, as her gift grows to teach and share God's word. I can see that she wants to do honestly and um, faithfully to the word. She doesn't like, uh, doesn't like twisting things. You said it with clarity. So I really appreciate her today. That's why I didn't have to talk that much because I know she could get the job done. So we thank God for her. Praise her. She didn't send me no text. Pastor, can let you come on now, Pastor. You come on now, Pastor. Uh, she <laughs> She's done a fantastic job. So I'm proud of her again. Just let her know. She's transparent, open and honest. But please just pray for her. Keep her. Thanks to Karima for singing her song as well. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Next time do it a cappella. My God. Hallelujah. Uh, we can do acapella together. Never mind. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is a good God. Hallelujah. We we welcome the shoulder. I can't see the shoulder today, but we thank God for the shoulder. Uh, our sister. Oh, the shoulder. Our sister from Brixton. Thank you, sister shoulder and sister Carey. Hallelujah. It's funny today. So I was sitting in church, right? All of a sudden, right? I thought something dropped from behind me. And I, I was sitting there. I thought, oh my God, how did that thing drop from up there? And then I realized like an hour later, Sister Clara had put something through the door. But in my mind, it's like something dropped off of the cupboard. But we thank God for Sister Clara. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Clara, we're waiting for your um, bottle, new bottle of rum to come to, um, to the church. Praise God. I'm waiting uh, for that new bottle of rum. So we pray that you send it sooner rather than later. Hallelujah. My other bottle of rum is nearly gone now. So I need um, you to send me a new bottle. Hallelujah. You know, rum helps me preach better. Mighty God, hallelujah. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm going to say I'm joking. God is a good God, that's what I'm going to say, amen. And sanitizer, thank you. Uh, exactly, that's, that, 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 that's excuse for me for a hand sanitizer. But, yeah. but hallelujah, mighty God. Okay, let's turn our Bibles to uh, the book of Luke. Did Nathan read the book of Luke? Did the music coordinator say read? Let's say, yes, Nathan's yes. name should be the music yes, coordinator, so everyone knows. Not yes. Nathan. Uh, it's either brother Nathan or music coordinator, so everyone knows who he is. Otherwise, it's going to get confusion. That makes sense. Give everyone their title. Hallelujah. That's like give everyone their title so we can operate. Everyone knows who's joining and knows who's who. Nathan's the music coordinator, so stick ministry coordinator for Nathan's name. Everyone knows that he's not Sizzler, but it's a music coordinator. Mighty God. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
God is a good guy. So turn up by Sir Luke chapter um three. You found it, put one in the chat for me. Let me know that you are live. I need the ministry coordinator. His name's not changed yet, but never mind, Mr. Scott. That's why you got the power to do that. Can't do it because you died. Uh, give me back the host and I'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Mighty God. All right, so changes, changes. I'll say everyone knows. My God. Have you prayed for Samuel yet? Have you, say, have, have you prayed for Samuel, Mr. Scott? Yes. I prayed for him. He's yeah, been oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no problem. But we need Mr. Scott to pray because he's got a level prayer. If you've got level 10 prayer, hallelujah, mighty God, hallelujah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we love the Lord, hallelujah. God is a good God. I say laugh the least the healing. So the more you laugh, the more healing that will come to you. So learn how to laugh, saints, yes? Amen. Sometimes amen. we get so serious in life, we've forgotten how to laugh, especially this lockdown. Lockdown can kill some people, just being locked in your house and being restricted in your movements and your habits have changed and it's depressing and all kinds of things. You comfort yourself with food. You comfort yourself with things you're not meant to be doing. and get yourself to difficulties, to do bad habits. But let me just tell you now, learn to laugh a little during this lockdown, if that makes sense. Yes? That's a, so God is a, cause God is a good God. Amen. It's funny because yesterday my nephew come to see me and every time he comes to see me, he always comes straight to where I am and finds me and helps me. And I'm the greatest uncle since life's bread. Hallelujah. So I give God thanks to my little nephew, Jaheem. Hallelujah. I remember when the others were little, they would done the same thing. But when they get big, they just ignore you. But I think God, give God thanks to my little nephew, Jaheem. Hallelujah. Because I'm still a hero to him. So we give God thanks. Uh, why am I saying it? Find the people that you're a hero to and honor them, if that makes sense. Spend time with them. Love them. Don't forget them, if that makes sense. Yes? Because there may be a day we won't, you won't be their hero no more. So take, enjoy it now and while it lasts. Because when they get older and think for themselves, uh, they may say, Chia, I can't bother that miserable old man. That makes sense. Yes, so honor your heroes. If you're the hero to someone, be our best hero in this lockdown season. Amen. Make a difference in someone's life. Praise God. The Son of Bible to Luke chapter. The Bible says that in the 15th year of the region of, sorry, of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judah, Herod, being of Galilee, brother Philip, tetrarch of Arturia, the region of that word, and Asteria, tetrarch of that word. While Ananus and Caiaphas were high priests, the Bible says the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Let's just stop there. Uh, Luke's a master historian. And, Luke's, Luke's, and, and what Luke does after chapters one and two, Luke trans, um, fast forwards like 20 years into the future. And, and, and Luke starts the situation by outlining. A, 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 a place in time and space. Because Luke wants you to understand, but he's now still speaking about the adulthood of Jesus Christ. And he wants you to know some of the key players in the region and key people to um, pay attention to. He highlights Caesar. Caesar is basically ruling the whole of uh, the Roman Empire. And Caesar is in charge of um, Jerusalem. And, and, and Caesar sent um, Pontius Pilate to Jerusalem to oversee it as the governor. And, 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 and under um, Pilate are, they, are, are the um, um, kings, if you like, or Herods, if you like. And so, 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 so what we have, we have a, um, um, a hierarchy there, starting with Caesar, if that makes sense. And, and there's an illusion here, because come to verse 2, you have the mention of um, John, John the Baptist. So we have all these great and powerful men in, being contrasted to John the Baptist. You need to catch this idea. Because men have chosen... Uh, other men to lead them and to do what they're doing but here we see a god has chosen a man has no money and nothing in a bank really he lives in the wilderness he eats locusts dressed up in um and camels here and, and it's a very very modest life but here we have him being introduced alongside his other powerful men amen there's nothing inherently nice about um john the baptist that people chase after him he's a very abrupt kind of man Yes, his message is very, very cutthroat. And he lives in the wilderness, yes? All these other men, they don't want to be where they're at, maybe apart from Caesar. They all live in this difficult kind of life in this, in this region of Jerusalem. Nobody really wants to live in Jerusalem at that time. It's considered to be a backwater of the Roman Empire. And Pontius Pilate definitely didn't want to be there. But here we have this man called John, the son of Zacharias, preaching and ministering in the wilderness, Amen. And so you need to take this point because uh, the wilderness is a key phrase in this chapter. Amen. And you need to capture this idea of this wilderness. Yes. It's a contrast. 
again, yes? So, so you need to put number one in the chat if, if you're following what I'm saying to you. So everyone say wilderness if you're at home. Say wilderness. I'll put wilderness in the chat. Because you need to catch the idea of the wilderness. Amen? My God. And many times in life, we often find ourselves in wilderness. And what, what do we feel like when we find ourselves in the woods? We feel discouraged, depressed, cast down, sad, all kinds of crazy stuff. When we feel like we're in the wilderness. True or false? Yes? No, no, yes? Yeah, someone give me a give me a thumbs up, whatever. Yeah, give me one in the chat. You feel cast down when you're in the wilderness. But here we have God placing John the Baptist in the wilderness. John the Baptist's pulpit was in the wilderness. John the Baptist's ministry was in the wilderness. John the Baptist's service was in the wilderness. John the Baptist didn't get a nice platform to serve. I didn't get a nice church. He went into the wilderness. Amen. But he was faithful to the calling that God gave to him. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 3, but John the Baptist went all over the place ministering and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins hallelujah so have this idea we've got john the baptist's message and not now you're going to get rich quick schemes got now if you put 10 pounds of offering plate god's going to pay all your bills here we have here we have john the baptist preaching a very cutthroat message repent yes he says repent and be baptized yeah he says don't play around with this thing repent and be baptized and those who are very, very acute or, 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 or very, very attuned to scripture, you will understand this is one of the first times in the New Testament we have the idea of baptism. And of course you need to ask yourself, what is baptism? Because if, if you don't understand your Old Testament, you're not going to understand baptism or what's happening here. You understand this concept of baptism, what's happening here. Did John the Baptist invent baptism? The answer has to be yes or no. Did John the Baptist invent baptism? What is that a rhetorical question, Pastor? Now, it's a question for you to ask, but Mr. Scott, mute everyone and to put a chat. Hallelujah. We love Brother Andrew from um, Herne Hill. We love Brother Andrew. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's one of my favorite brothers from Herne Hill. He's the only brother that I know from Herne Hill, in fact. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But so John the Baptist didn't invent baptism. Baptism arose from a practice in the temple called uh, mikvahs. And mikvahs were a bath. So before the um, people um, done religious rites in the temple, either priests or other people would wash themselves in a mikvah, but wash their sins away, yes? And the idea that, that they would get that stripped down naked, yes? But go into the bath, yes? And I come out again, and I use the phrase that I'm now born again. I, 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 in this morning, the ceremony cleansing is that you need to catch the idea again, brother. And you're too quick. Sometimes you're too quick. You need to listen. They, 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 they strip down naked, but go down into the mikvah and come out again. And when they come out of the mikvah, the phrase they used to use back in the day before the Old Testament, before the New Testament, is that I am born again. So they had this idea of rebirth. And this idea of rebirth signified the idea of cleansing, yes, and also rebirth a new life. And join the Baptist is, is preaching this message in the wilderness because technically it should be done in a place like the temple or where there's running water. And the Bible says he'd done it all around the Jordan, which is a river with running water. Because back in the day, baptisms were done with running water because water were considered to be alive. Yes, and you couldn't be baptized in a steel pool, you had to be baptized in living water. Catch the idea living water which symbolize the spirit of god who is living so you're baptized into christ you're baptized into the holy spirit who is living so you may have life so therefore you have the idea of being born again catch this idea yes so don't just get so re religious you miss the essence what's being said here there's a lot of significance being said in a particular portion of scripture we have the idea of remission of sins the words remission speaks of um buying back sins getting rid of sins yes get it to wipe my sins away but we know that they only had the blood of animals at that time to wash the way the blood to wash away the sins of the people jesus christ had not died at that particular time here's john the baptist it's like a prelude to be coming messiah and john the baptist knows this does that make sense john the baptist knows he, he, he's got he's got a part of the picture he hasn't got the full picture but he's still doing what god's called him to do and often this is what happens in church God calls us to a ministry there's no hype there's no love there's no what's that word there's no encouragement 
there's no um um celebrity there's no easiness there's no eating it's everything just difficult and often when things are difficult what we often do we step back for ministry but here we have john the baptist working very hard in ministry ministering to the people preaching god's word hard not a soft message come to church i will, will be your friend or the friendship gospel is preaching a hard cut throat message he's saying you need to fix up and repent because god's kingdom is at hand you are in trouble you are not in a, you're not you, you, the best life you want to live now you can't really do that because you are in trouble the best life you want to live needs to be fo follow through after repentance amen can i get one hallelujah mighty god god is a good god someone give me a one in the chat hallelujah I'm not the ministry coordinator. I need someone else to give me one. Oh, Mr. Scott can't give me one. Hallelujah. Mighty God is a good, good God. Hallelujah. I'll be telling me she could not offer Mr. Scott off and I don't need to. I blast him. Hallelujah. God is a good. Hallelujah. So have this idea that John the Baptist is an uncouth man. He's living in the wilderness, preaching a hard, hard message. It's not the friendship gospel. It's not like it, uh, I consider myself to be like a John the Baptist. Not, not necessarily a nice person. Just tell it as it is don't put nothing up say it as it is i know some people don't like it but say it as it is there used to be the old song tell it like it is you remember that song says clara mighty god you may not remember because you're in church <laughs> you may not remember but oh, hallelujah look at the shoulder hallelujah. let's ignore the shoulder sister clara don't worry about what the shoulder says amen but we get to verse four and the bible says this luke studies his bible Luke studies the scriptures because Luke then gets out his Bible, gets out his scripture at a time, and what he does, he copies a segment from Isaiah chapter 40. Yes, he says this. He says, I'm gonna quote something so you can catch this idea. Because what Luke has done, Luke has connected the dots. Luke is sitting in a spirit, he's not he's not a disciple himself, uh he, he, he's not a direct he's not a direct disciple of Jesus Christ. He's a he, he's connected to maybe to a Paul, but he's not a direct disciple to Jesus Christ. He didn't walk with Christ on planet Earth, but he's received reports and done his investigation. Look at chapter one, verses one to three, and he's done it very carefully. So Luke gets out his Bible of the day, he gets out step step two or whatever it is, yes, of the day, he gets out the uh, Aramaic scripture of the day, and he quotes scripture. He says this the prophet isaiah said this the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make his paths straight now you need to catch this does anyone know what this scripture means does anyone know what this scripture means put one in the chat if you know what Anyone know what this scripture means? Anyone? Put one in the chat if you know what it is. Everyone's being cautious now. Everyone's not setting a trap up for them after my wind. That's the past being too nice today. Maybe he's trying to set a trap to um, bury me alive. Now, I'm, it's a genuine question. Here we have this idea, <laughs> just because of time. Luke quotes Isaiah. I, I, I have the phrase in the scripture, the prophet. Isaiah, the prophet. So it says, I'm going to quote a prophetic utterance from the prophet pertaining to this particular matter it, so lucas say i know what john the baptist ministry is because scripture tells me john the baptist ministry is the voice of the one crying in the wilderness john the baptist understands obedience to god's word as living god's word amen john the baptist is preaching god's word and he's doing god's word you're not just saying it but he's doing it it's, it's the voice of the one crying in the woods he's caught this in his heart and his mind and his spirit to understand i've got to do this thing in terms of preparation does that make sense he's making a way yes he's preparing something he's not saying he to pray about it. he's not saying he to go fast and about this thing he understands god's word and he's doing it there's no doubt in john the baptist's mind he's preparing the way of the lord he needs to catch this point yes and john the baptist knows he's the one crying in the wilderness and Luke has connected the dots together and said, this is speaking about John the Baptist. Amen? Amen? I, I, and the next bit is the key bit. Hallelujah. The next bit, not many people really understand the next bit. Yes? Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen? So here Luke, here Luke's saying that John the Baptist has been sent forth to prepare the way of the Messiah. That seems easy, it seems straightforward on the face of it, but it goes deeper than that. Amen? 
Remember, we often have common language, we, um, or we have memes, or we have um, phrases, or we have um, catchphrases, or we have whatever. There's a program on TV called Catchphrases, yes? And I mean, there's a whole industry, yes? So when you recognize it, so they show you a picture, and you gotta catch it, you gotta, you gotta try to um, guess the catchphrase, yes? My mum loves those programs, I see her trying to guess the words and whatever, yes? And catchphrases continue through generations often, yes? Does that make sense? Like I did. Does that make sense? That's a catchphrase. That's a meme. That's a phrase that we can use in today's world. Yes. But the, the, the key thing is here: is John the Baptist has used a, a, a reference uh, um, from Isaiah, and he's living it. Yes. Luke is quoting it. Prepare the way of the Lord, and it means something more than just pre him preparing the way. Amen. It's a command. John Abbas is not just preparing a way, but he's commanding for people to do something. You see that in the text. Put one in the chat if you see that in the text. Okay, Mr. Quinn, I'm going to ask you later what it Okay, Mr. Quinn, let us know what it means. So I'm meeting the Mr. Coordinator, hallelujah. Not my win, you know. Might have you, actually. Okay let's, okay, let's have a free for two minutes. Okay, uh, I'm going to meet you and Mr. Scott. Hallelujah. I've had a good laugh for a week or two. <laughs> I'm going to be silent to give you a time to talk. Go on. So, in pertaining to um, prepare the way of the Lord and make his past straight. Yeah, that's that. Prepare the way of the Lord. That phrase alone. Obviously, John's whole life was really like a prelude to Christ coming in. Like, he, yeah. he was telling people. They repent like lives to ways. Yeah. Maybe judgment of not too late. Yeah. So he was getting them into the mindset of doing in yeah. terms of making his path straight, he did everything right in terms of what he should have done. In yeah. terms of telling people way to go. Okay. However, I am not the full story, I'm not the full solution. He's coming. Okay, okay. Uh, is that is that it? Have you finished? Have you finished? Anything else to so add? Therefore, if you if you want to pass the baton on someone say else, on, yeah, I can pass it on. I was going to say though, just on top of that, he made sure that everything by quote unquote in terms of the way. It Anything else you want to add to that? Anything yeah. else? I don't need to say pastor. You didn't give me a chance. Like on Tuesday, last Sunday, last Tuesday, Sunday, last Tuesday, last Sunday, week after week after week. See, Mr. Scott's my witness. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's anyone else wants to have a crack? Names, anyone okay. else want to crack? Mr. Oh, Coordinator good. Sizzler, let's save him. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyone else wants to have a crack at, 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 at it? Sister Mawinho, now you've been done good today, so I don't want to tell you off. I was going to say, Brother. Oh, yeah, Brother Samuel. I'll say, yeah, Brother Samuel, I'm away. Go on, my brother. Yeah, um, said, 100% good to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? Anyone else? Is a Karima, you put one in the chat. You want to talk? You want to keep drinking a, uh, a Kamala tea? Malate. A Malate. No, I'm not necessarily. I was agreeing, but um, okay. I'll have a go. Okay, go and have a go then. I'm fine to you. <laughs> um, preparing the, the way of the Lord is like. Um... Okay, look, let, me, let me help you. Is... No, 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 wait, hold on. Okay. I want to have a go. No problem, no problem. I want to have, want to have a go. Have a go, have a go. Um, that the Messiah is coming. So obviously, the yeah, um, excellent. the people would have known that. Um, well, the people have been in, um, they've been in turmoil for like four hundred years. Yeah. So for them, it's a statement that the Messiah is coming. They mm -hmm. would have known that um, there is a savior coming. Yeah. Obviously, from the prophecy made before. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of going on to the next bit, and every mountain and hill shall be leveled. Um, obviously. We know what a mountain is, is the um the place obviously where the gods or the, the gods sit. They kinda um mm -hmm. they use it as a reference as, as yeah. to where God you, is. You might be going off peace um, here, but go on. 
just, <laughs> they use it. I'm just saying they use it as a as a reference as to where 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 God sits, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's um, that's and it says the next bit shall be leveled. It's like um, it's 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 almost talking. It's talking to that um, that God is actually at their levels at transcendence if that makes sense oh, like, going, God it's, is it's able, you're able to see God God will be here if that makes sense you'll be able to recognise who he is Excellent. Like, here going. he is if that makes sense here he is he's coming okay so make the connection um, now then we're nearly there we're 60%, um, 60% there and sister, sister um, CB has helped us get 70% there 8% there we need another last 20% now but, um, one second minute she called it you had the chance you had the chance the... yeah yeah <laughs> I gave you a long bite of the apple, praise the Lord, hallelujah. This is the idea. When it says, prepare the way of the Lord, every valley shall be filled and every mountain shall be healed, every mountain and, and hill brought low. The crooked place shall be made straight, the rough way smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Catch the idea now. Who, who, is, who is Isaiah speaking to? Now don't necessarily answer or unmute yourself. Have in mind, who is Isaiah speaking to? And who is Luke speaking to? And who is John speaking to? The people, the covenants people. Furthermore, the whole world. It, it, Isaiah is speaking to Israel, but it encompasses the whole world. It, it's speaking to us. It's speaking to, it's, it's speaking to people in time and space. It's, this, is what, this, is what, this is a command to us. It, so, the, John, the Baptist, John the Baptist's ministry is encompassing this. The voice of one crying in the woods. So you analyze John the Baptist's ministry. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he says to the people, you need to take action. You need to do something. You need to do something. Nathan, just paste in the, uh, what, what, what title did I give today's message? Paste that in the chat for me, Mr. Scott. Paste the title I gave in the chat because I, I want you to track on this point. And if I stop in the next five minutes, I want to track on this specific point. But here is the key. Amen. I don't want to go too fast. I make sure everyone understands this specific issue. Amen. Praise God. So was copy and paste in the things. I can't do it. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Amen. He makes a way for you. Be ready and basically be prepared. Amen. He makes a way for you. Be ready and be prepared. Catch this idea. John the Baptist is the cry. He's the herald. He's the town cry. He's the city cry. He's the kingdom cry. He's saying, listen, he's gone ahead. He's got a bell in his hand. And he's saying, God is on his way. God is on his way. I'll give you some analogy. Some of you bad-minded children, when your mom and dad used to go out to shopping, right? And they say, make sure you do the washing up, right? And then you had so much fun in the house when mom and dad were shopping and then you realized you hadn't done the washing up. What would you do in about two minutes? So you just take half an hour. You try to do the washing up in two minutes. So what you do, you hear mom and dad at the keys in the door, you're right to go and do the washing up and you, and you try to do some washing up. Back in the day, I know you've all got dishwashers now and I know the generation's got dishwashers now, but when, but when mom and dad, I'm going to say this, going wherever I'm going, yes, Yes, but when they come, you had a key in the door, you stop playing your game, you stop playing the computer games, and you went to go and do the washing up because you heard the keys in the door, yes? You took action. You took action, yes? You took action. Here, John the Baptist is saying, John the Baptist is going to Sainsbury's, and he's saying, prepare the way of the Lord. And he expects a response, yes? Yes? He's saying, prepare the way of the Lord. He's commanding the people to take action. He's not just saying it as an option. He's saying God is on his way. And, and, he, and he uses a catchphrase or a picture that everyone would have understood. He speaks in a language that everyone understands. Because back in the day, in Isaiah's time, when they used to make his path straight, every valley shall be filled, every mountain shall, and hill brought low. The cool place shall be made straight. Because when kings were, were traveling from one place to another place, the, the a herald would go out before the king, and ever and, and a herald would say, The king is on his way, make this road smooth. So when a king comes, he's traveling on a smooth road. Would you catch the idea now? Would you catch it? 
says she, so when it said so the herald will go before the king i tell everyone in the city everyone in the town the king is on his way fix this road i don't see no potholes in this road i don't see no stones that, that, that the king could trip up on i want this road to be a class the best type of road out there if you're gonna work all night make this road smooth and clear because the king is coming so when John the Baptist used this phrase, he said in everybody this particular issue. Everyone knows because when he says, when John the Baptist says, prepare the way of the Lord. I'm going to use the next phrase from Isaiah. Everyone knew exactly what he was saying. John the Baptist said, a king. You need to get out there. Stop what you're doing and start fixing the road. Amen? Start fixing the road. Cast, cast the title now. Jesus will make a way for you, but be ready and be prepared. Catch the idea. Jesus will make a way for you, but catch this idea. You need to take action. You need to be ready and be prepared. Too many times we're sitting down, waiting for God to do something. But when you know that God is on his way, the Bible is telling you here specifically, be ready and make a way. So when God arrives, the road that he travels on is smooth. The catch this idea. Cat, yeah. Everyone's sitting down on me, hallelujah. Catch the idea again. You need to take action. Not necessarily the pastor, not necessarily the church, but you need to take individual action. Get your bucket and spades or whatever, your tarmac, whatever, your big rolling machine, and prepare this road because Jesus is on his way. Yes, let me, let me give it an application now. This is the idea now. Many times, we've been, this, we've been in two lockdowns now, and many of us have not adopted this mindset that Jesus is on his way. Mm. We have not adopted a mindset where Jesus is on his way. way. We have not adopted a mindset that, that we need to get out of there and start fixing some roads. So when the king comes, there's no, there's no hindrances or obstacles for the king. My God. We're waiting for the king to go past all the obstacles to reach us. But here, here is the opposite of that. John the Baptist saying, the people, you need to change and fix up and prepare the road. You need to spend some money. You need to spend something. It's going to cost you something because the king is coming. Many times you have this idea that everything at church is free. It doesn't work like that. Hey, I, I'm telling you right now, John the Baptist saying to the people, spend your money, spend your time, spend your effort, sweat a little bit. Break up your normal day because the king is on his way and you need to start fixing the road. You need to start getting all the potholes filled. Now, you can't have no sloppy, uh, like this, a patch job. It's got to be a proper fix, but it lasts. So when the king comes on the road, but you're not embarrassed for the king when he's on his way. This is the idea. Are, are you catching the image right now? Yes? Yes? No? No? Yes? This is the analogy. This is the issue. So if you're sitting down comfortable in your house, if you're sitting down comfortable in your Christianity, if you're sitting down comfortable in your religion, get up and prepare the way. David, put that title back into the chat for me, just so I can track hallelujah. Prepare the way. Be ready and start preparing. Be ready. He's on his way. He will make a way for you, but get ready and start preparing. Why was Jesus on his way? To set the people free from sin. Yes, set people free from guilt and shame. This is the idea. The king's got more benefit for you if you put a little bit of effort in to the preparation of the way. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, saints? Yes, no, no, yes. Because in comparison to what the king can give to you, set you free from bondage or shame, guilt, and whatever. Get your axe out, get your roller out, get your target out, and start preparing your way. Get your Bibles out, get your prayers out, get your fasting out, get your service out, and start preparing the way. So as the king comes on the road, there's no obstacles on the road for when he comes to meet you. The last thing you want to do is to hinder the king when he's coming to meet you. Amen? It's about your heart being ready. Is your heart ready for the coming king? Because when you hear the call, but the king is on his way, where is your heart? Is it busy about doing the things of this world? Is it about the kingdom? Which one? Are you busy? Are, are, are you a Mary or are you a Martha? What do you choose? Do you worry about the wash up and cooking or sitting at the feet of the Messiah? What are you preparing to do? Because many people are saying they're serving God, but I guarantee they're not serving God. 
but they're not doing anything to prepare to be ready for the coming king. They're not evangelizing, they're not witnessing, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not signing to God's kingdom where God's placed them, they're running around all over the place, all, all, all kinds of ministry that God has called them to. They're not preparing the way. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I love the analogy because when Luke writes this text, he writes in a language that everyone back in the day understands. Sometimes we have this idea, the Bible's hard to understand. It ain't hard to understand. But God knows your heart is hard. God knows your ears are stubborn. God makes the message so clear, but everyone understands. And when Luke wrote this, everyone from a child to an adult understood exactly what Luke is saying. Could have pictures right there back in the day. If there's a big mountain, chop it down so the king can have a level path. So, you, so when you see him and greet him, he's on his way to town. Amen? Amen. Let's go to verse 6. Verse 6 says something amazing. It says this. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. He's a John's message is for the whole of planet Earth. Not just the people with darker skinny hues or light skinny hues. It's made for the whole of planet Earth. Catch the idea. The voice one crying in the wilderness. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he says to the people, now it's your turn to do something. Because George the Baptist says, I'm heralding for coming to the king. Now get out there and start preparing the way. And he says this, it's not just for the children of Israel. It is for everyone. And all flesh shall see the, the salvation of God. So you may think, I'm not a Jew, I'm not this and the other. No, God is coming. And with your salvation, is for everyone. Amen. Let's go to verse. Touch upon this. I, I like John the Baptist. John the Baptist is a hard man. He says this. John the Baptist speaks to the multitude. He said, it came out to be baptized by him. He says, you, you snakes. <laughs> I love John the Baptist. If I come to church, I, I, I do say things like often. Forgive me. No, 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 don't forgive me. I have to say you snakes. Hallelujah. John the Baptist says, you snakes, that ain't you. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it ain't you, don't worry about it. Don't get offended. We got a very, we got offended. We got a group of people that are offended a lot in St. Jude's. Don't be offended. But John the Baptist says to the people, you are snakes. He said to the, and he said this, he said, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? It, it, so John the Baptist says, you understand the situation, but catch the idea. You know, you can hear it, and, you, and, and that's why you come here. He says, you think just getting baptized is enough, but you are snakes in your heart. He says this, it's an opportunity, here's grace, verse 8. He, he goes in high and calls them snakes, but it gives them grace in verse 8. He says this, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. I do not begin to say to us, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children. I'm sorry, I'm children to Abraham from these stones. He, he, John the Baptist is saying this. Here's, here's the system. You're a snake who warned you to come. I see your heart is trouble, but here's grace. And stop giving yourself an excuse saying that you're religious, but you're connected by the covenant of Abraham. That ain't going to work with the Lord. Fix up. Let me do it for modern day. St. Jude's, if it applies to you, you're a snake. Who warned you of the wrath to come? I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Next bit says, then here's grace. But many of you will cut me off if I call you a snake. You will cut me off and say, oh, pastor called me a snake. Pastor being mean to me. Pastor. <laughs> I think of a loud voice. When I think of a loud voice, people can get offended and upset. But I'm going to be myself, if that makes sense. But what they often miss is the grace. What I often miss is the grace. I may be hard on some people, but then I sprinkle grace. I say the Christ is not in the head. I may be hard as the Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> when I face the some people sometimes I can some of them phone me about the Christ. Like they face the Christ. And then we have a good laugh for one minute and then I tell her off. Because she knows at the end they was to come. Because it's called grace. Does that make sense? Too many of us are too offended instead of preparing the road because the king is coming. Prepare the road because the king is coming. Stop being offended. Learn to walk in grace. Amen. Your religion ain't going to save you. 
You being at St. Jude's or being at Queen's of Pentecostal ain't going to save you. You need to have come to that place of repentance. You saying I come to church ain't going to save you. You say you speak in tongues ain't going to save you. You saying that you knew this bishop from back in the day ain't going to save you. You need to come to that place of repentance. Turn away from your sin. Amen? And Jeremiah says in verse 9 says this. And even now, the axe is laid at the roots of the tree. You are in danger. And he says this, fear. If you ain't living for kingdom, you're in trouble. Let me read, let me read the verses. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What are your fruits, St. Jude? You can't fake it. You can't make it up. What are your fruits? Is it bitterness? Is it gossip? Is it twisters? Is it sexual immorality? What are your fruits? Are you giving excuses for the sin that you're participating in? What are your fruits? Is it gossip about the pastor chatting his business? What are your fruits? What are your fruits? Are you stop? Have you stopped giving to the church? What are your fruits? Where has God called you to, but you're not working in? What are your fruits? What do you need to do to, to, to get to that place where there's fruits, where you become fruitful and serving the things that God's called you to do? Because sometimes we love the aspect of preaching of grace. But here we have, but in link to grace, it's, a, it's the warning and the instruction. Amen. And as Christians, we've got to label things as they are. If you're a snake, Embrace being called a snake, but then repent. Stop, stop living like a snake. Hallelujah. And the verse 10 is amazing. Because here's a call to action. John the Baptist's words are so strong, there's a call to action. It's this. People said to him, John, what shall we do? And as they say it three times, what shall we do? St. Jews, don't start writing as a complaint and moaning and complaining. There's a call to action, and you worship me. What shall we do? Stop complaining and, and, and moaning and criticizing. Get out on the street and start evangelizing and winning the loss. Stop trying to hold yourself and try to uh, assert, uh, 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 and cement it in your own home. That means okay. Go out there and win the loss. If the loss in your house, start living the Christian life so you can win the loss. Allow grace to permeate every single. Uh, square inch of your home with grace. But so, let's be real, some of us. Some of us, we don't live in our homes in a, in, in, in a spirit of grace. We're contentious. We're backbiters. We're gossipers. We do all kinds of crazy, mad things and still call ourselves Christians. But every non believer in the house to call us Christians and save them, bless. No. Allow the whole of your house to be permeated by God's grace. Every square inch. Don't pretend. Don't fight. Don't be a hypocrite. Tell everyone you are messed up, but God's grace is sufficient. Live the Christian life in your house. Reach out to people at work. Don't be the hypocrite. Stop doing what they do. Live differently. Live that life for. Verse 11. What shall we do? And what shall I do means I've got to give. Be happy with what. Let's look at verse 4. Likewise, let's, 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 let's Teacher, what shall we do? And John the Baptist says this, let no more than what is appointed for you. Stop serving the prosperity gospel. Learn to be content with what you have. Learn to be content with what you have. That means not, it doesn't mean not to be ambitious. The idea. Learn contentment. Learn contentment. That is a message being lost in the Christian church for the last 30 or 40 years, especially the black churches. Learn contentment. Every single minute, every second minister is always preaching, get more money, get more money, get more money, so we can spread the gospel more. I guarantee you, all the money they have have not helped spread the gospel further. I guarantee you. This is soldier in verse 14. What shall we do? He says, stop intimidating people. Stop uh, accusing them falsely. Be content with your wages. Again, a second time. Contentment. Alone contempt is great godly. 
That means your heart and mind is set on the kingdom. God may bless you and increase you with wealth or kind of things, but be content. Allow God to increase. You. Amen. Stop chasing after paper or money or, or singing Wu Tang, cash with everything around me, cream, get the money. Stop doing those types of things, but trust the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Three more minutes. The people were so shook at what John about to told them. The Christ. Are you the Christ? And John says, no, I'm not the Christ. John says, I know my mission. They said, John you're doing so good. Are you greater than what you are saying? John says, no, no, I'm not greater than what you are saying. I'm limited, John the Baptist said, in my ministry. But it's one that's coming, it's, it's beyond limits. I can only baptize you with water. But the one who's coming, I'm not even worthy to, to do his sandal laces. But when he comes, he will baptize with the holy fire of God. Pentecost, you should get a life right now. Get ready for the baptism of God's fire in your life. Then a God's fire in your life it will burn out all the dross. It's going to hurt. Because some things we're holding on to, but God's going to burn out in life, it's going to hurt. Because something hurt, it doesn't mean it's not from God. Sometimes God uses pain to drag things out of your, to take things out of your hand. Some things in life burn you so badly. Some things in life embarrass you so much. Some things crush you so much. It's not because God don't love you. God loves you. That's why he's allowing you to be crushed and bruised and wounded. It's, it's because he loves you. Because if I lead them in a situation, they're going to go and get even more wrong. Amen. And so here's God working in a mess. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I then John about uses the idea again of the winnowing floor or the fan. He's going to a fresh floor and start beating the wheat to separate the chaff from the grain. The chaff will blow away and the grain will remain. Amen. I, he's got the idea of being beaten heavily. Some of us, we don't like pain. Embrace the pain. Embrace, em, em, embrace the struggle. I got on my thing. Master the art of dying to yourself. Master the art. It ain't about you. If you're offended, it ain't about you. It's about what you're going to do. That legacy you're going to leave in this planet Earth for the next 10 generations down the line. It's a, it's a legacy you leave to your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. That is what God's calling you to do. Leave a legacy of the kingdom message. If you have not preached a gospel message to your children and your children's children, you're failing that generation and preach the message well amen verse 18 john the baptist preach up and preach to the people but guess what the leaders didn't like it when i said don't be offended you know what as a pastor i think you say that, that, that in your mind this ain't going to cause no offense these are things that people usually have stumbling about and they trip over these things and they get well offended. And here's a man called Herod. Is well offended at John the Baptist ministry. Because John the Baptist preached against Herod. Taking his brother's wife. Amen. Ain't like, it, ain't like, it ain't like in today's world. Where that would be considered to be normal. It's just one of those things. In this day it's a very conservative society. And Herod was ashamed. Even today we say someone does that. They're ashamed. Amen. People and, and John about saying you're not living right. You're living in sexual immorality. Stop it. And Herod was offended. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 20. John the Baptist was shut up in prison. He didn't like the word preached to him, basically. Yes? That's the idea. But I'm going to go back. To, give me one more minute. When a, when a John the Baptist rises up anywhere on planet, listen to the instruction. Stop being offended. And follow instruction. Yes? Listen to the John the Baptist of this world. He's doing what God's called him to do. He may not look the part, speak the part, at the part, but he is the part. If it says to you, prepare the way of the Lord. 
That means get yourself ready. Take action. Get out there and make that. Put every brick in that road so when the king comes, there's no obstacles to his come. You say, what are the obstacles? Your sin, your shame, your guilt, your lack of action in, within the church community. Get rid of all of that stuff. So when the king comes, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Praise God. God is a good God. Amen. We love the Lord. Amen. We're going to pray in a minute. If you need prayers, put one in the chat. If you need prayers, put one in the chat. Holy Sammy needs prayer. My God. No one else needs prayer. I know many of you need prayer. Do you know why I know? Because you, you, most of you, you are silent during the week. Uh, and, and I realized that the more silent you are, I used to consider, oh, there's nothing happening in church. What I realized, there's a storm and a tsunami brewing in the church. But because we're so proud, we don't ask for prayer. Or we choose people, specific people to pray for us. Stop acting like you got everything together. Put your hands up and say, I need prayer. Because you're living a lie otherwise. I know there's more people in this church that need prayer. Because I know you ain't got everything together. Ask for prayer. Ask for prayer. Stop lying. Ask for prayer. The word has gone out. The one crying in the woods, prepare the way of the Lord. Not the same people. Ask for prayer. The quiet I know the church is, I know, that's when we need more prayer in the church. Are you take it as a sign that everything's all right in the church? I say, and I now realize we've experienced that. The reason why a lot of people are silent or do they do secret prayers on the sideline? Because they need real kind of prayer. They need a church corporate prayer. Not just a one-to-one -one and a sideline kind of prayer. Because sometimes you need to expose the fact that you have a need. So someone's looking and saying, that brother's got it all together. But someone's watching you saying, that brother's got it all together. And they can't see that you've got a need. But you need to come to God's altar and say, do you know what? I ain't got it all together. I need prayer. To set an example for the younger, weaker ones among us. I'm not even talking about in terms of age. I'm talking about in terms of experience of following God's word. Amen? So if you need prayer, say you need prayer. you got prayer on a Monday and a Friday. Blow up that hotline so they're praying throughout the night for you. Stop carrying the burdens God said don't carry. God says, cast your burdens onto Jesus. Stop trying to pick people to pray for you who you think can pray for you. Sometimes God don't want them to pray for you. God has assigned a prayer team at the church. Ask the team to pray. Stop the side hustle. Stop the side hustle of prayer. Get everyone, get the team to pray for you. Amen? It's called living a life of transparency. Ask them to pray for you. Amen? Let's bow ahead. Let Mr. Scott pray for Samuel for uh, prayers like live team, but goodness, it live with um, yeah. Make oh it God. sure. Thank you. Thank you, God. Make this one. Oh God. Be his source. Thank you, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, that lesson. Thank you, God, for your life. Oh God, that with him hands that oh Lord that seek you, seek you. Well, give you all the praise. Okay, brother. Father, we thank you once again for this. We don't own it. And, and I, To start prayer, protect energy, prayer, prayer worries, ice burning bosom. We receive trying to do the praying at a heart. Us to be. Our touch, our healing. 
trying to be breaking that healing dead and cast down how that he transformation those will get a country portion those need to download them pause and see that was the pause see our heart Those who have not put their hand in the cloud, and to what put their hand, and to stop the second hand, don't ask the second premier for the best. Touch your people with your and say, what it means best. Stop giving. Father, I let them stay in the room. Some people say, vaccine. I do believe that you are on your way. Pull your path and get it done right now. Stop them. Don't let them be like I let your prepare. It seems it's let it be for I said it. Touch your people and to repent, Lord. Get this out right of you. On Tuesday, you know, it's, it's the uh, what's that thing called? We're doing? Members, uh, meeting. members oh, meeting. So please attend the members meeting. So tell all the church people that don't like come to church, attend the members meeting, and they can have all their gripes and complaints at that time. Uh, Nathan's going to be um, um, hosting it. Not when I say hosting it, um, moderating it. So please be kind to him. Hallelujah, my God. Sister Andrew will be there to ask your questions. Sister Dorothy will be there to ask your questions. And uh, and Sister Avon will take the minutes. You got any questions? You got until Monday to submit your questions. If they want to be answered. No one ambush Nathan, Sister Angel, Sister Dorothy. Uh, I, I, I was all like, I'll ambush you if, if that makes sense. So you don't like when I start becoming. Uh, if that makes sense, so please. Uh, I look at being myself. So be in order when you get to the meeting and ask questions if they're relevant. Even if it's not relevant, put the question down, write it down so we can be prepared properly because it's important and we discuss. Um, uh, what, what the direction of the church? Nathan is going to put later in today, uh, in the WhatsApp group, the agenda, and he will also. I think uh, we've got the minutes now as well from the previous meeting. We'll post that as well. So read the minutes and read the agenda. So when you attend the meeting, everything is in order. If that makes sense, yes. Don't just um, um turn up unprepared, but be prepared with everything. Does that make sense? Uh, also we have when we when's our prayer meeting? Is it on Friday? We got a prayer meeting. 27th, is it twenty yeah. seventh? So the prayer meeting on Friday. So please put that in your diary, uh, so you can schedule a church prayer meeting. I think the last one it wasn't well attended. Only about eight people from the church attended. That's like less than ten percent of the church attended. So whether you're millennial, young or old, cancel other things and get to the prayer meeting. Stop saying that you're that you're in the road. You're preparing what God's called to do, and you don't attend the prayer meeting. Attend the prayer meeting. Yes, I'm heralding this. You get ready and get right and do what God's called you to. You not like it, but I'm telling you as it is. Amen. Mike, I'm be kind. Hallelujah. Please attend the prayer meeting because we need you. Mighty name. It's going to be a wonderful thing. So even Sister Marie, you have to look at, oh, who is this talk? Uh. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, who is talking? <laughs> He's like, who is talking? Attend the prayer meeting. It's a, get a blessing if you attend the prayer meeting. Also, we we discussing finances at our um the, 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 uh, members meeting. So members is not going to be open to the general public. It's only going to be open to members and long time visitors of St Jude's. Um, so um, so please if you um please don't um log in, uh, because we're we're putting a wage room and exclude you uh, during our members meeting. And so on the um Tuesday, so please just cooperate with us. Not because we want to be mean, but sometimes I need to protect people from other people's uh uncovering. If that makes, but my God is in full control. If you can't get to prayer meeting, if you can't get to a members meeting, the minutes basically highlight you should be sending a text or an email. You should be saying say something in writing. I cannot attend the meeting. It's called courtesy and respect. And honor. most people can pray. Oh, pastor doesn't respect me. Pastor doesn't love me. Show some respect to your other members of your church. Forget me. Send a te- text or an email to Sister Angela, Sister Dorothy, saying you cannot attend. Uh, uh, it's, it's a matter of uh, courtesy and honor. I hope we will start at seven o'clock. We might start a little bit later. Just depends. I'll calculate a couple of things. 
uh, I do a move forward from there. So please um, attend the members meeting. If you've got any questions about COVID and lockdown and the church, we've got we've got to discuss a lot of financial issues as well because our finances are being challenged because we've um, like everyone else in the world we're losing a lot of money. So please just attend so we can discuss the money issue. I know you're Pentecostal, you love talking about money, so we're going to talk about money for a little while on a Tuesday as well. So please, um, uh, so we can get everything done correctly, amen? Uh, any questions you may have, you have to post it. If you're not going to be there, you have to come as a map courtesy. Send an email to Sister Angela, preferably, or phone her, or put it in writing so you can be excused from the meeting. Don't just not turn up. That's very, very disrespectful, and it's not honouring to your other brothers and sisters who we'll make the time, amen? And uh, attend a prayer meeting. What else? Also, we've got evangelism on the 28th. I might cancel that or postpone that, but we'll see. And hopefully, the church will be reopened after the 2nd of December. But I can't confirm that. The most likelihood thing will be that we could probably continue church on Zoom uh, for the rest of the year. We made uh, if I if I allow the church to meet again, I'm not sure if they're going to. We may have uh, one or two services maximum, but I, but I think we'd probably just continue on Zoom. Uh, and see how where the new year brings us. There's a there's a national meeting on the um second or whatever of December, I think or it's one of those days, the fourth of December. So please pray for all the ministers who attend that meeting. Again, up uh, uh we we'll get uh, more official instructions. And please read the letters I've sent you from head office. I put them on WhatsApp. Everyone knows what's happening. There's no confusion. So everyone uh, has a clear idea. And I'll send you the uh, newsletters as well and everything else. And those who attend the other churches, it's okay. Still attend those churches because God loves you. And God's words being preached all over the place. That's this Clara. We're smiling for Sister Clara. I'm just, <laughs> it's one kingdom that we're in. Hallelujah. Or if you, or if you, thought, if you, want, if you start your own church, hallelujah. Still do that thing because um, and then we'll discuss it in the new year. Mighty God, hallelujah. And I'll be like John the Baptist, if that makes sense. Mighty God. Because God loves every single one of you. And blesses you, hallelujah. Didn't Nathan do a fantastic job? We thank God for Brother Nathan. And didn't Sister Maria do a great job? And Sister Karima and Mrs. Scott and anyone else who was here, praise the Lord. Yeah, networking, hallelujah. So please support them as they minister uh, and then move forward. So, second of this, um, so the meeting on Tuesday is only for church members or long time visitors. So, if you're excluded, don't get offended and pass the message on, amen. It sounds to me coming to church, tell them to come. They can rail up and make up all kind of noise because they're going to have all ears to listen to you. And, the, and Sister Ava's going to take notes for you. And Sister Angela and Sister Dorothy will uh, have arranged a meeting for you. You can rail up and make all kinds of noise. God is a good, good God. Is this a pastor? Yeah, I am. Mighty God. I'm like John the Baptist. Mighty God. You're going to kind of pass it down the road, I think. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to say that many pictures in class. You're saying many pictures in class. Hallelujah. So I'm mute, Sister Clara. Okay. All right, the benediction together as we all pray. And now may the saving grace Praise of our Lord, Lord and, and Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, the love, love of God, God the, Father, the Father, all fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the, the Comforter, comforter. rest and abide with us amen. all now and always or forevermore. Amen and amen. 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 Bless you all, amen. saints. Amen. Have a good afternoon. Try yeah. to log on this evening uh, before we do our apologetic session. Amen. Advanced Amen. Bible study. Bless you. Take care, guys. Amen. Bye. 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 Bye